Hello YouTube, I'm Jay and this is going to be part 2 in my series on how to build no water change tanks. And in this part I'm going to teach you the process of denitrification and on how you can get rid of those pesky little nitrates that um, essentially means you need to do water change because of them. So how do you get rid of them? And the process of getting rid of them is called denitrification. So everyone knows what nitrification is. It's getting rid of ammonia and turning it into nitrate. And this is a process whereby a th a something with a high toxicity is turned into something with a very low toxicity. But everyone knows this stuff builds up and that means you have to do water changes. Denitrification Denitri is the process of turning those nitrates into nitrogen gas. So this is what makes up 70% of the atmosphere, it's N2. And so if you can turn the nitrate that is dissolved in your water into a gas, it's just going to fly away into the atmosphere and it's going to be gone from your tank. So in order to understand how to uh, get this denitrification, denitrification going, um, you've got to understand what this reaction actually means. So what's going on in this reaction? So first, we're going to take a look at nitrification first in order to understand denitrification. So everyone knows nitrification, you're turning stuff like ammonia and nitrite into... Nitrite turns into nitrate, and ammonia turns into nitrite. So this is nitrification, so what's going on here? So let's think of something that we are much more familiar than, um, say, these nitrogen-based stuff. So this is the exact same thing except this is nitrogen based and this is carbon based. So let's say this uh, we have a piece of wood here which is a carbon fuel source. <clears throat> wood is a carbon fuel source, it has energy inside it and um, ammonia and nitrate is, nitrite is just like that except it's based on nitrogen. That's the only difference here that is uh, relevant to this discussion. So what do you do in order to harness the energy that is stored in wood? So wood has energy in it. And how do you release that energy? Well, you can just burn it. So what is going on when you light this wood on fire? So this wood, this carbon energy, is converted into CO2. It flies away. And in the process, the energy that is stored inside the wood is released in the form of heat and light. That is the fire, light, fire that we see. That's the energy inside there being released. And what do you need to release that energy? Well, you need oxygen. So the oxygen has to come together with this carbon, and together they are able to release the energy that is stored inside the wood. And it's the same story for nitrification. In order to release the energy that is stored inside ammonia and nitrite, you need to have the help of oxygen and then you can release that energy which is consumed by the bacteria they eat that energy with the help of oxygen and that's how you get these guys so that is what nitrification is but why do you need oxygen? what is the purpose of oxygen here? so this is oxygen and this guy is crazy he is constantly hungry now, I don't really want to explain all that redox chemistry and why oxygen is so hungry for electrons. Just understand that oxygen is a crazy, crazy molecule and it is always hungry for electrons. So what you're doing when you're burning something like ammonia, well, you're not actually burning it, but effectively, just to make it easier to understand, is you have something that has energy inside it, this energy stored inside it, and in order to release that energy, you take the high energy electrons and let's say you're running it through like a little a water mill here that's an easy way to visualize it you run these high energy electrons through like something that looks like a water mill flows air, this thing turns and you get that energy, it's like a generator but you can't just uh, like flow the electrons down through this water mill like this like it doesn't work that way in real life you gotta take this high energy electron and give it to somebody. You can't just leave it hanging there. And that's where oxygen comes in. Oxygen is always hungry for electrons. And that means it is a great oxidizing agent. 
and you do not have to know what this means, all you need to know is that oxygen is always crazy for electrons, so if you just kind of bring it close to these guys, oxygen will gobble up those electrons and make it very easy for stuff like bacteria to harness that energy that is stored in the ammonia. So this electron has to go to oxygen, and that is how you extract energy. So remember, when I'm burning the carbon, when I'm burning the wood, exact same thing is going on. The high energy electrons that is inside the wood, that is a carbon source, you just pass it on to oxygen, and in that process, you get the energy released in the form of heat and light. And same thing for um, the nitrogen based stuff. So that is essentially what's going on. So, normally, normally, when you have oxygen, which is a very effective oxidizing agent, you got something that is a carbon food source, which can be anything from carbohydrates to alcohols like ethanol, vodka, beer, to acetate, which is the stuff in vinegar. So you have some sort of carbon food source, and you collaborate with oxygen, and you turn it into CO2, and in exchange you get energy. So you can harness the energy inside the carbon, so a carbon food source with the help of oxygen. So that is why we breathe oxygen. We need that oxygen in order to release the energy stored in the food we eat. But what happens if there is no oxygen present? Now for um, animals like us, human beings, if we have no oxygen we just suffocate and die because we can't use anything else. But bacteria, they have evolved to circumvent this problem. So if bacteria have no oxygen, they're gonna need to find another oxidizing agent. It's simple as that. Oxygen is not the only guy out there. Oxygen is common and is very crazy, very hungry for electrons, but there are other stuff that bacteria can use, and that is where the nitrate comes in. Nitrate is not quite as crazy as oxygen, but it is the second best thing they can use. So instead of flowing the electrons to the oxygen, because it's not available, you can just flow it on to nitrate. And that is going to turn this thing into nitrogen gas, and you can harness the energy that way. And that is why, that is essentially what denitrification is. You have carbon food source, but you do not have oxygen, so the bacteria instead settle for the second best thing, which is nitrate, and they use the nitrate to breathe and harness the energy that is inside the carbon food. That is done by guys called heterotrophic facultative anaerobes. This basically means they eat food like us instead of generating energy from the sun. And it means facultative means they can go either way. Nanorobe means they can live without uh, um, oxygen. <clears throat> so these guys, under normal circumstances, they're going to eat something like a carbon food source. This is ethanol. Any carbon food source, they can eat a bunch of stuff. And what they do is they normally they breathe oxygen. Because as I said, oxygen is the craziest guy and is the easiest way to harness the energy that is stored in there. So they're going to breathe oxygen just like us and eat carbon just like us. But unlike us, if they are uh, living in a condition where there is no oxygen available, they are going to start to breathe nitrate. So this nitrate is going to go in, it's going to help them harness the energy that is in their food, and then this nitrate it's going to be converted to nitrogen gas and it's going to fly away and it's going to be gone for your tank. So you can see here that in order to get these guys to use the nitrate instead of oxygen, you have to eliminate the oxygen from the environment. And that is why you need anoxic conditions. Anoxic conditions means basically there is no oxygen present. Um, if you see um, uh, topics discussing denitrification in a lot of forms, you'll see them instead say anaerobic conditions, but this is technically not correct. Um, the technically correct condition is there's no oxygen, and that is called an anoxic condition. Anaerobic means there's no oxygen, there's no nitrate, there's no sulfate, there's no elemental sulfur. Basically, anaerobic means there is no really good um, oxidizing agents or electron acceptors. So we're going to use the uh, technically correct term, which is anoxic conditions. So if you produce anoxic conditions and eliminate the oxygen, the bacteria will instead breathe nitrate and get rid of them. So that is the essence of this um, denitrification. 
So to recap, um, nitrification is the process where the bacteria, such as Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter, which is actually Nitrospira, I've discussed it in the filtration basics. <clears throat> these guys, these bacteria, they eat the nitrogen, they breathe in oxygen, and that is how you get nitrate. Denitrification is where facultative um, anaerobes, uh, when they do not have oxygen, they instead breathe nitrate and eat carbon. So these are fundamentally different reactions. It's not just ammonia turning into nitrate and then turning into, and it's not like a continuous stream like that. These are fundamentally different processes happening. This guy is eating the nitrogen, this guy is breathing the uh, nitrogen. So they are completely different. And in order for this to happen, you need anoxic condition. So that is the gist of this uh, series, um, this part here. Um, in the next part, part three, I will discuss how you can produce these anoxic conditions in your tank so that you can get these bacteria working for you and remove those nitrates. Thanks for watching, guys. I was Jay. See you in the next part.